Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, for today's card, I'm. it was honestly a spur of the moment thing. I suddenly went, oh crud, I haven't got my video for this week. So I did a mad rush and a, a, and a very quick thinking session last night and had to pull this together and it worked out so well. So I'm really, really chuffed. So to start with, I've got a, I used a lawn fawn stitched rectangle to die cut my um, panel here. And I've got MFT's grassy border um, stencil. And I'm gonna start with some twisted citron um, to get my grassy border going. So an easy way to do this is to stick your card to your stencil at the back. So line it up where you want it and then just stick some washi tape at the back or like low tack tape. And um, it just helps to hold the stencil in place without you trying to hold it as well. Uh, and it just makes it a little easier. The cardstock I've used is Bristol Smooth cardstock. Now I've seen and heard wonderful things about this cardstock and how good it is with distressing, which is what I'm using. And it is so different to like a watercolor. <laughs> paper if you imagine a water I love watercolor paper but you imagine a watercolor paper is sort of textured and even if you get a smooth one it's still quite grainy I guess this is so smooth the ink basically glides all over it and it just it works so well so it's got this sort of somewhat shiny look and you'll see that in a minute but it dries really beautifully and it just for me the colors were super vibrant on it and that's what I actually quite liked about it so it doesn't mean I'm not going to use watercolor paper. I love watercolor paper. <laughs> so, so the two greens I used were Twisted Citron and Mode Lawn. They're two of my favorite combos for distressings. Um, doesn't matter which, uh, whether it's this, this or the oxides. These are the regular ones. Not that there's anything regular about them, but <laughs> they are so cool. So then I'm going to take some Dusty Concord, Wilted Violet and Black Soot to create a moody kind of sky. And I love this. Um, yes, in some other videos, I've gone a little heavy handed on the black soot. <laughs> um, but this, doing it the way I've done it on this one, it worked out really nice. It's sort of, there's almost a halo above the grass, which is what I was kind of going for, but I didn't know if I could achieve because, um, of how close I could get the ink to the grass without starting to really ink the grass up, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, I was really chuffed that it got to, um, you know, that it, it blended and gave this almost like a halo effect. I thought that it worked out really, really lovely. So I'm just going back and forth with some blender brushes. These are makeup brushes. Uh, the big gold ones are from Wilco's, <laughs> so super <laughs> inexpensive. And the little black handled ones were from Amazon. Um, there are some great companies out there, craft companies who have their own brand of these. Um, I don't know if the bristles are much different or anything. I have nothing to compare to, but these work really, really well. So I've used my distress sprayer to spritz the background. You've got to have splatter. I'm sorry, but you've got to have splatter on everything. <laughs> and I love doing this, uh, as you probably know now. Um, and I also took another little bottle that actually needs refilling. Um, but honestly, this little Cosmic Shimmer bottle has been around for so, so long, 12 years or something. Um, and the spray that's in has probably been in there as well for that long. Um, and it's just got some mica powder. So I think it was probably Ranger's Perfect Pearls that's in there in the color Perfect Pearl. So it's, um, it's just a subtle shimmer, but it's, you know, it just adds the shimmery bits to the background. And then I dried it off with my heat tool. And I put that to one side to dry even further. And I'm starting to put together my build a house and build a house add-on from Lawn Form. Um, the add-on is the Halloween add-on, um, obviously, because this is a Halloween card. <laughs> and um, there is, there's a little hole in, sort of just below the roof line there and that is actually so that you can make this into a reveal wheel card so I will do that for you guys at some some stage but you can also cover it so that you don't need to do that you can use it just as a normal house so a non reveal wheel 
card or house. Um, and so I'm just starting to put all the pieces together. So I've got the door going. I just cut a piece of cardstock to go behind that. But for the windows, there's actually a die that will cut the, I guess, what will be the glow inside the house. And so I've used all um, Stampin' Up! cardstock here. But the colors for the cardstock actually came from the ink colors. So the ink colors that I chose for the background were what I chose first. And then I looked at all my cardstock to see what colors would work or coordinate with it. Um, and that's kind of how I came up with the colors that are now the house. <laughs> so, um, and I'm just taking the distressings and I'm just inking around the edges. I think inking the edges when you've done an ink background especially makes that image like it 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 just ties it in together and it makes it cohesive as if that makes sense <laughs> and so it's sort of like it's meant to be if I didn't ink the house as well and all the layers I don't think it would have it would have been okay but I don't think it would have turned out quite as cool as it did um, I was really chuffed considering you know I had to think on the spot and think right what's quick and easy that I can get this together and I can get the video out and and that's this is what I came up with and it really was quick and simple um, it only took a little while to to do all the die cutting um, yeah you know the 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 Halloween add-on comes with like a wonky door and a wonky window you've got ghosts you've got spiders a spider web the bats you know all the planks for across the windows so it's all there and the roof um so it's it's all there you just have to cut it all out so it's really really easy to do so i'm just sticking my little ghost on i decided not to put anything behind the ghost because they're ghosts and here i realized that um <laughs> i had to actually stick around the window at the top because there's nothing behind it so <laughs> and actually in hindsight if I'd thought about it the piece that actually cuts that hole for the top window I could have washied that at the back so that it was one level and then I could have stuck my window on but as it turns out I had to stick you know put some glue around the edge of the the hole <laughs> and then stick the window on but it, it worked fine it's still stuck there so <laughs> So I'm just going around and like I say I didn't put anything on the back of the um, ghosts because they're essentially see-through. Could have cut them out in vellum as well that would have been, been quite nice. Um, I did the spider webs in vellum. Um, it's one of those things that I find quite difficult to actually stick without seeing tons of glue. So this worked out okay and I think because it's Halloween you can kind of get away with stuff like that but I think if you're doing something really pretty or, or you know there are you know you've got to sort of think design wise of whether you can hide the adhesive um like i say this didn't work out too too bad and mostly the spiders being on there it kind of hides them the the glue for the most part anyway so i'm just getting them on there on the house because you know no haunted house is going to be done without spiders and webs and <laughs> ghosts and bats <laughs> of course <laughs> so I'm just getting my little spiders on and they're so teeny tiny in fact the door handle was the teeny tiniest little thing ever I nearly lost that thing a few times um the die is really tiny as well so um yeah but yeah I just got and I love that there's like a, a wonky chimney as well so you know all of it's been thought about and I think that's so so cool So there's the little house all set up. So now I'm going to take a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. This is a top folding card. Um, and I'm going to just stick the um, background panel to it. And I sometimes open my cards up and then start from the bottom edge to the, the fold line. I find it easier to actually line up that edge just in case you fold it in slightly off then you might end up sticking it on slightly off if that makes any sense <laughs> so. and then look 
Um, I also used my pink stamp as spooky puns. This has been around for donkey's years. Um, she no longer sells her stamps, unfortunately, and I cannot find any of the other ones out there in, well, in the UK anyway, um, that might still be hanging around to be sold. Um, but I've got a few sets and I have got a Halloween and a winter Christmassy one. So I decided that actually the the sentiment spooktacular worked really, really well with this. And um, originally I was going to put the sentiment at the top somewhere, but I think this worked out much better. It kind of balanced out, especially by the time I get the bats on there. And um, it just, it worked out really, really well. And like I say, this was <laughs> such a spur of the moment kind of card. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to get it done. I didn't know if I was going to have time to do it. I didn't know if I was going to actually think of something quick enough. And actually, I'm wondering whether this is how I should do this because I seem to come up with this. I really love how this turned out. You know, I've used colored cardstock that is not a matching cardstock to the ink that I used, and yet it works so well together. So maybe this is how I should craft, <laughs> you know, just like on the seat of the, <laughs> what's that expression? I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah, probably was last night when I was making this, but it worked really well and I just think it's so adorable. You know how you make these projects sometimes and you just think, damn, that's so good. <laughs> Very occasionally I make those ones. This is one of them. So I've just stuck my bats on there and uh, that's that's pretty much it. But I decided to um, give a bit of shimmer and shine <laughs> to this. Um, I could have actually like glossy accented the ghosts. I think that would have been quite cool to do. But I decided to just use a Nouveau uh, Aqua Shimmer pen and do the bats and the spiders. Um, and that was kind of enough to add a little bit of sparkle. Um, it kind of ties in with the fact that there's some shimmer on the background that are splattered on. And it just all works in really quite, ni quite nicely, I thought. So I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. And um, I'll obviously be back for saturday's christmas one um but yeah try different card stocks this is what i tried on this one and it works so beautifully so happy halloween everybody bye